This is a foundation inspection. We're at the rear elevation, so we've got patio area here. And what we've also got is the foundation covered up. Now this uh, patio area is formed by a deck. Um, the decking is up against the walls, which it shouldn't be. And it's in contact with the ground, which it shouldn't be. The problem with decks like this is they harbour all sorts of problems. So there's stuff under there I can't look at. I can't look at the foundation and I can't look at the grade. They also a prime area for uh, either very dry spots or very wet spots. So uh, there'll be a bit about it in the report, explain to you what the issues are with this type of deck. We're at the uh, left rear corner elevation. You can see a post tension cable end is showing here. It's got to be covered. It's covered with waterproof mortar. It's called parging. We have erosion here. You can see how the Foundation is showing. This is a grade that was be or the be grade beam that was below the grade when the building was uh, first built, and that needs to be covered up. You get undermining, and that can cause a problem with your foundation. And there's also a nail here that's dangerous; it needs to be cut off. We're at the uh, right hand elevation now. Post tension cable head showing. This one's pretty bad, you can see it's starting to rust out. It's got to be fixed. Oh, I cover it with a waterproof mortar and that fixes it. Grade inspection, and the grade is sort of okay here. It doesn't slope as much as I like. We have erosion all the way around the building, mainly because of missing gutters. And the runoff from the gutters erodes the soils close to the foundation. It's not a good idea because it also gives wet spots next to the foundation. So part of good management is to install gutters. I mean, you've got some on the front, but they should really run completely around the house. Here we've got a large tree, it's going to expirate thousands and thousands of gallons of water. I can tell you that its roots will definitely be underneath the house. You can see the roots here. I recommend that you have a root barrier installed in this area here. 
uh, you trench it and you put in a specialist barrier stops the roots actually getting underneath the house and causing damage so that's the front elevation left elevation it's a good water it's good good drainage Out the rear elevation, we've already mentioned the deck here. It's going to cause a, or could cause a problem. I'll say it can cause a problem. And we have another tree. And again, that tree's roots are going to be extending out towards the house. And I would recommend a, a root barrier in that particular area. We're uh, carrying out the roof inspection first thing I draw your attention to is we have a, a gazebo and it's uh, resting on the roof see along here on the shingles that really is not appropriate what should happen is it should be cut clear of the roof and not supported by the roof I would recommend that you put in some uh, supports in this area here coming down to support it um, so that it actually is freestanding and is separate from the building as it is at the moment it's going to be causing damage to the deck and to the uh, uh, shingles in addition you could see it's already started the rot where the wood is in contact with the shingles and it's getting wet uh, this is correct it's actually supported here although I can't see what its foundation is it's going to be a pillar how it's actually assembled no idea um, I'd recommend uh, early modification, put in some support beams and uh, then some support posts uh, along here, remove the, uh, the, the, the uh, lumber that is actually in contact with the, the roof so that there's, it's free and clear. Let's continue around the building. We have soffit vents. Hi. At the right elevation, we have soffit vents. A couple of these soffit vents are coming away. They need to be secured and sealed. We're using a hands-free camera, so if it looks a little odd, that's what's going on. This is the uh, flashing at the right elevation there's a lot of debris in the gutters now I'm not going to be able to walk all over this roof because it's too steep for me I'm going to be able to walk in certain areas valleys and along certain parts of the ridges but that should be enough insight into what's going on up here we're uh, at the front elevation looking towards the rear and we can see the chimney I'm going to use uh, another camera to look at the back of the chimney uh, rather than attempt to climb all the way up there and it's uh, I can feel my feet slipping as it is and what I can see of the roof up here 
it looks okay. Now one of the questions was asked was about hail. Hail is notoriously difficult to identify as damaging roofs sometimes. And the only way we can really do it is by looking at the the metalwork on the on the roof and in particular the vents. And if you look at the vents that are spinning in front of us you can see flashes of silver. That's almost certainly caused by hail. And there may have been hail in other parts of the area that affected other houses, but not this house. As I say, at the moment, I can't tell if there's any hail damage from the roof, looking at the roof directly. All the penetrations look good. Let's go and get the camera, specialist camera. We have a special camera that we can use to get into parts of the roof that are inaccessible by walking. There's lifting flashing there.
I'm just about to inspect the attic and we're in a garage area and the first thing I'll draw your attention to is the attic hatch and you can see it's not fitting properly. Well there's a real problem with that and this is the problem. These garages are actually built to contain cars and vehicles and flammable materials for example petroleum spirit, gasoline. As such the fumes are intended to be prevented from getting into the attic and they stop them. If there was a fire in here the way in which the house is protected, this door here, if you move it you'll find it's heavy, is a fire door and this wall here is actually 5 8 uh, plasterboard or um, sheetrock. It's thicker, it's intended to hold a fire back for an hour. If there was a fire in here today it would go straight into the attic and spread to the rest of the house almost instantly. So this has got to be sealed in fact, you shouldn't even be keeping a vehicle in this garage at the moment without that being sealed. It's too dangerous for the family. Uh, as we can see in here, we've got gas, uh, we've got um, liquid gas being stored. And I should imagine there's going to be petroleum in cans, if not in the other devices around here that's used, typically in a garage. This is the hatch. We've got it down at the moment, there's no weather seal on it. We're in the attic. What we're looking at here is the structure. This is a purlin. It stops the rafters spreading. Generally interested in the condition of the structure and the structure itself. There's evidence of a water leak at the rear of the chimney. This is wall inspection. We're looking for the condition of the walls because it indicates movement in the foundation. And also, of course, the walls are important. This is a veneer wall, it's not structural. What it's here for is to keep the weather out. Immediately, I've got a hole in the wall here. See it? That's got to be fixed. Just down to the uh, right of the air conditioning unit. Now, this inspection covers also the windows at this stage. I can tell you immediately all the windows need re-corking. Uh, corking is always done at about the same time when you build the house. You can see here we've got a hole in the corking here. And you've got cracks and holes in the corking there. I'm not going to go and video every window in this house. I don't need to. I can tell you now you're going to have to have it re-corked. Here's the real problem. If you don't re-cork it, you get warm air, very hot air in the summer that's laden with humidity goes in through that hole and then it uh, condenses and you get moisture between the walls. So you get moisture in the cavity area and you don't want that. You get four or five months of real moisture and that could lead to all sorts of things like organic growth, attracts wood destroying insects etc etc. So you need to fix it. This is an expansion gap and it should have been corked and it's not so 
that's literally come from the day it was built and the expansion gap has no corking in it Uh, corking's quite bad here. Now, what's caused that is actual small amount of uh, movement. Actually, the house has moved down in this direction here, very slightly. It hasn't moved enough to damage the brickwork yet. But it's certainly gonna require, I think, a lot more watering. You see the ground is, gra is broken up here, it's cracked. There's not enough moisture in this area, and as such, this part of the foundation is sinking, and it's pulling this wall here away from this window. The window's staying in place, look hasn't moved here but here it has the gap has opened up so recork it for the moment but also start to run the sprinkler systems around the house uh, every two to three days for a few minutes in the evening and a few minutes before the sun comes up in the morning front elevation now Again, we're looking for cracks in the brickwork and damage to the windows. Yeah, corking of all these windows. Badly needed. But the walls are looking good. No sign of movement. That's the front right elevation. Here we are at the front decorative gables. We've got deterioration in the corking around the windows here. Here, there's a hole opened up between the siding and the wall. That's got to be caulked. That's going to allow a lot of water in the house. And we have another expansion gap and this gap's closing uh, that's because it the foundation at this end is sinking slightly and it's closing and pinching the brickwork together now the window at the uh, we're at the left middle elevation and we've got considerable wood rot here. In fact this whole trim here needs to be removed. Trim around here, here removed and replaced and at the same time it's got to be sealed. Now the water's getting in somewhere through the windows here so there could be a problem with the flashings but you'll find that out when you take this apart. That needs to be done ASAP. Okay, so on the day of the inspection I can tell you that the foundation is doing its job. There are very little uh, signs of movement in the walls. A couple of e little bits of evidence on the left hand and right hand elevations, um, but minor. 
However, I do recommend that a uh, water uh, irrigation system for the, found, uh, the grade around the foundation is considered. Um, got the sprinkler system there, you just need to use it. This is the door inspection. Look at the container of condition of the doors. Now this door here, both sides of the frame are rotten. You can see here and here. Uh, that can be cut out and uh, uh, re would replace it. But when you do so, you've got to stop it rotting and you do that by having an undercut. This uh, wood should not be in contact with the concrete, which it is at the moment. Because it's in contact with stone or brick, Water can wick up into it and rot it, and that's exactly what's happened there. So wood rot in the frames at the uh, rear yard door. The rest of it is okay. Let's go and look at the front door. We're at the front door. Now, we haven't got wood rot here. It's fine, it's not undercut, but it's sheltered by the porch, so it's not getting wet as it has been at the rear door. Here we've got a weather seal on the storm door, which is good. Got a weather seal complete on the door here, so that's fine. Here we are at the uh, yard door, uh, sorry, the uh, garage door. This is a one eye off fire door, it's very heavy. And it should be self-closing. See. Yep, that's good. That's a weather seal. That's what we look for. It's good. And this is the garage door. Closing mechanism. Bricks. This is the fireplace. This is a compressor, we're on the uh, right hand elevation property and we've got a maximum breaker size here of 40. It's in good condition. Units level, good insulation on the pipes. It's looking good. Now we need to do is check out the breaker size in the uh, panel. It should be 40 or less. Now we've got 40 amp breaker, which is correct. <laughs> 